Hi, Maggie Harding here today, and I want to show you how to make a travel journal using the Sizzix Scoreboard XL Journal Die that was designed by Eileen Hull. This is just one of my favorite things that I've had lately. It's a big die. I don't know if it all fits in the camera, but um, it makes a book that is eight eight and three quarters by four and a half. So it's a nice little book. So we're going to be using this die and we're going to be using some chipboard and I'm going to be using Cartabella's um, transatlantic travel paper and I've got some scrapbook adhesives sheets here. These happen to be 12 by 12. I've gone ahead and cut them in half so that they're 6 by 12. There are lots of brands on the market and you can use whatever you like. I know Sizzix makes one. Um, there's other companies. They're all going to do kind of the same thing. So the challenge here is to get the paper on the right side of the cover that you want. Basically everything you're doing is mirrored I guess. I'm just using this as an example. This would be the front of my cover. And if you can see the die here, there are holes here on the right side. And that's the way you want to orient your die. So if I had cut this, it would come out and it flips over and there's the right side. So what does that tell me? That tells me that I want the cover of my journal to be face down. And this paper right here is what I'm using for the cover. Okay, so it's going to go here. My chipboard's going to go here. And at the same time that I'm cutting the cover, I'm also going to cut the back. So what we need to do here is adhere adhesive to the front, and then the paper, and then the back, and then the paper. So let's get started. sure that you burnish this really well so that when you pull the backing off oops the adhesive stays on the cardboard my paper down you don't need to worry about burnishing this too much because when it goes through the machine it's going to get burnished so now I'm going to flip it over and do the back side. I want to be sure you put your adhesive in the very same place because this is the front of the cover and this is the back. Die paper down, holes on the right, open this up, that's going to be the front. By golly, I've got it. Okay, I'm going to run this through my machine. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. I've got a nice front cover. came out just like I wanted it to. And look how nice that looks. I love that you can just do both sides at once. Isn't that just cool? Okay, so there's the front. Now let's do the same thing and do the back. Right. Now, remember the outside cover goes down. That's it. So I'm going to die cut that. Okay, one thing I like to do is I like to ink this channel here. It looks better than the raw cardboard. So what I've used is a Faber-Castell Big Brush Pen. And just gone in here and colored that channel. You have to be really careful because one slip of the pen and oops, there goes your cover. The Sharpie works pretty good too, but my Sharpies are kind of old and the points basically gone on them. So, but anyway, that's one nice way to get a nice ink in there. Okay, I'm back and ready to show you how to 
bind the two covers together. I went ahead and embellished my covers as I like to do that before I put them together. It's just a little easier. And all I've done is inked them very heavily with Distress Oxide Black Soot Ink and Distress Ink and Gathered Twigs. This is a Creative Embellishments chipboard piece that I've heat embossed with Stampendous Aged Gold. And then these are some stickers from the Cartabella collection that I'm using, Transatlantic. And this is some of the design paper from the collection. That's the outsides. And on the inside, I cut out a quote here and just a couple of stickers. And then this is a little pocket. So all I did was I put score tape on this and this edge. And here you can slide something in if you want to. So that's how you do that. Okay. Now the front is going to lap over the back. So I'm going to use some quarter inch score tape. Just press them together. Okay, now we can thread our elastic. This is elastic cording. I think it's about two millimeters. It's fairly thin. I think maybe something thicker might be nice. And there are instructions for how to thread this on the Sizzix website. But I think I'll go ahead and show you how you do it. So you start from the outside and bring the thread through. Go back through this hole. Then at the bottom, come back through the center hole. Okay. Go back through the top middle hole, come back through the top right hole from the outside, go through the top or the bottom right hole, come back through the center bottom hole into the inside of the book. It's really very easy. And then, if you've got plenty of cord, you can go ahead and cut it and bring this top one through the center hole on the outside, bring it in to the inside. Now, you've got two options here. You can tie it off like this and then use something else to make a closure for your book. Or you can, uh, I like to pull this pretty tight. You can take both hole, both threads through the center hole to the outside. Then I'm going to tie this off like so. And I'm just going to leave it for now. I'm not sure whether I'll use this as my closure or I may tie some dangles on here. But anyway, so there you go. See how easy that is? Now you just slip your signatures under here. So to make one of my signatures, I wanted some old looking paper. So what I did here was I 
coffee dyed these papers. Now, I wanted something a little heavier than copy paper, so I've used a 65 pound cardstock, and it was cream to start with, and then I just dyed it with coffee. Now, I used just some coffee out of my husband's coffee pot. Something stronger maybe would have given a darker color. I'm, I don't know. I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't know much about coffee. But anyway, just got some fun patterns. The way I did it was I dipped the pages in the coffee, got it all around, and then I put it on a cookie sheet and put it in a 375 degree oven for just, I don't know, three minutes or so. Um, I made coffee cup rings just by setting a coffee cup down on top of it. The doily, you dip the paper in, you dip the doily in, lay the doily over the paper, put it in the oven, and when it comes out it looks like that. Pretty neat, huh? So, okay, that's how we get old okay, paper to make the that looks all my stained. Booklet, I'm going to trim it to seven and three quarter inches on the long side. Then I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. And instead of trimming it at eight and a half, so that when it folds in half, I'm going to just score it at eight and a half. The reason I'm doing that is so that I can have a little extra flap there that I can, you know, I can either trim it off later or make a flap to use for something else. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the rest of my pages. So now I want to show you how to make the signatures and give you some ideas on how to make the pages and some time-saving tips. So I want my signatures to look old, so I want them to have kind of a battered appearance, but I'm really impatient and I just can't sit here and distress every little edge. Well, at least with this tool, I don't know if all tools will do it, but I can fold this paper in half and distress two edges at once. Then that's my idea of a good time. Okay, so see that turns out pretty good. Tip number one. Okay, so now this page has got the doily on it. And again, I did that by putting a, a coffee soaked doily on top of the coily coffee soaked paper and then put it in the oven. That's how that made it. So this is just a little mat. And I think I'm just going to glue it here inside. Uh, later on, I will go back and decorate all my pages, and then I'll do a, a video tour for you. But I just wanted to show you how to put the book together and give you some ideas. And if I had some glue that would run, we'd be doing good, wouldn't we? Okay. Now... For me, one of the things that I really love about a junk journal is it doesn't have to be all neat. I can be kind of sloppy, and that's okay. And I am kind of sloppy by nature, so it works. All right, so there's one idea, just, just a simple page. Now remember that these pages are stacked on top of each other. So what's on this page and this page are not going to be showing together. There's going to be another page here, like so. But anyway, there's one idea. Now here's another idea. I've gone ahead and inked most of the pages. Border cut across the bottom. I particularly like this torn notebook paper look. On this page, I left the flap. If you remember, we um, cut the pages to, I think it was seven and three quarters. Yeah. And we scored at four and a quarter, eight and a half, and then I left the flap on some, and on others I cut the flap off. So on this one I left the flap, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this page right here, which is from Authentique's Pastime Collection, and glue it inside. So what you've got here is this will go in the book like this. This will be, or some page will be stacked on top. So when you open this page, it's going to be like a 
this and this will open this way and then that'll open that way and then I'll decorate the um, flap here with something we'll see what happens I need to furnish that okay so there's another page idea this is simply a two page either you know put photo mats whatever you want here is another page that I've um, border cut with that notebook paper punch. I'm just going to put a mat here in the center of this one. Now, this one is similar to the one I just did. I'm going to leave that doily so it shows. And then instead of folding the flap in, I'm going to fold it back and I'm going to put the paper there in the middle. Now for this one, I'm going to take this large piece of paper and glue onto the flap, but I'm going to make sure it stays free of the crease here. Here's another, another uh, punch, and I'm going to turn this away so that this one's on this side this time. I'm just going to put a photo mat here. Okay, let's see. Now that page that we had, let's see. Yes, this one. This is just a simple page. We're going to make two tuck spots. Okay, this is going to, I'm going to attach this to here. And so when you're flipping through the journal, this will be on one and this will be on another. So I want some, I'm going to use quarter inch score tape. I'm going to put tape along the bottom. And let's see, I want tape along the bottom. That's all I want. I just want, and I'm going to take some really narrow score tape. This is an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to put it on either side of the fold just to kind of hold the paper in place. You would, you really probably wouldn't have to do this but I think it's a good idea okay now whoops I just want to see Stick this straight into the fold. There you go. You've got a little tuck on either side. Now let's put this together. No real rhyme or reason to how I'm doing it. Just gonna put them together. Now, there's a couple things you can do here. Some people don't like the fact that you've got that much paper sticking out. In a junk journal, I don't mind it because it's, I take the word junk literally, meaning that it's just stuff and I want it to look messy. So I'm good with that. So if it bothered you, you if you, you would need a, a rotary cutter, but you could take a rotary trimmer a steel edged ruler and, and cut that off. 
and I do that for some of my neater journals. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm not sure if it's going to work because this is pretty thick, but I have a stapler that has a reach that will go right here. Let's see if that'll work. Perfect. Or just about perfect. Good enough. Do one up here. Now that is perfect. Okay. Flip it over. I want to press the staple down because since it's so thick, they didn't pin down real well. There you've got it. A nice signature. This is another signature that I put together. I just want to show you how you can trim the edges of the page so that they're all flush. You'll need a steel edged ruler like the Tim Holtz ruler and a rotary trimmer. So just run the trimmer up along the edge. Don't really try to cut through all the papers at once. It's kind of impossible. Just keep running it back and forth until all the paper is trimmed away. Now I have a cover for this signature. It's a little bit larger than the pages inside, so I just want to ink the edges and I'm clipping all my corners. So now I want to assemble the signature. I'll take the cover and the inner pages, clip them together, and staple just like I did the other one. So after I attached the covers together here, I went ahead and finished up the outside. I made a little dangle here, which I attached to the elastic band. Now let's put our signatures in. So you want to find your center page and you just tuck it under the elastic. There's room for three signatures. I've only got two right now. Just slip it under there. And there's room for a third one in the center. So that's all there is to it. Then your elastic band. You just wrap around your book. And there you've got it, a traveler's notebook. So thanks a lot for joining me. If you enjoyed my video, I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much. I will be doing another video to show you the interior of all the pages.